got the Bible with you today. I was uh, meditating on some scriptures, and the word of God was talking about the man that trembles at God's word is the one that he abides with. I think one of the things that have happened to us in the past few generations is that our society has been brainwashed out of faith in God's word. And because they have begun to think that it was left up to uh, whether you believe it or not, a lot of people just automatically, when they hear it, start questioning it. It doesn't matter whether you believe the word of God or not, it's going to work. Everything God said was going to come to pass is happening right now. He spoke of this generation and everything that he spoke concerning the generation. He said, as it was in the days of Lot, so it should be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Anyone have an idea what the Bible teaching went on in Sodom? Anyone, anyone of y'all know? What? <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was injustice in the court system. Amen. He that set himself uh, for righteousness made himself a prey. There was homosexual activity going on. Amen. It had become the norm. So much so that so much so that Lot's daughters were married, but had never known a man. Had not had sex. They were virgins. How you married and you're a virgin? <laughs> how do you how you marry and you're a virgin? Look at that and say, how are you marrying your virgin? So as one, somebody just said, I had, they never consummated the marriage. So these, so these daughters uh, remain chaste, though they were married. So saints don't disassociate what the scripture says pertaining to the last days from what's really happening around you. Don't try to whitewash and fix it, try to make it something that it's not, because it ain't gonna work. Homosexuality become almost an accepted lifestyle. You wanna find out about what God said about it, read the 19th chapter of Vitica and the first chapter of the book of Romans. You'll find it, amen. And God said that it was an abomination. Did y'all hear what I just said? And one of the signs of the last days that men would be effeminate. Effeminate? Effeminate? Yeah. Yeah, tender. Can't take nothing. Yeah, soft. Feminine. That's right. That's in the book. And it was written there before you were, some of y'all were there before I was born, before many of us were born, before our parents were born. It had been there for a while. So we didn't just put, just all of a sudden decide to write that in the book. Amen. God, Paul said, Paul said, in the last day men will be lovers of their own selves. More than of God. So what are you seeing going on? There will be blasphemers. What do y'all see going on? Disobedient to the parent. What do y'all see going on? Yep. In some cases, that might be good, but in most cases, it's not. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. He said they would be furious, incontinent, yes. without natural yes. affection. Yes. All that stuff is going on right now. It's foretold thousands of years ago. Amen. But yet, people sit and act like the Bible is not pertinent. It's not relevant to our day and hour. How? When they foretold this day, Amen. it talked about this sinful and adulterous generation. Amen. And we're living right in it. Amen. It talked about all the nations gathering against Israel before it, and Israel had been scattered. Amen. It was not a nation. And it got, so in other words, for 2,000 years, Israel didn't, uh, 40, uh, 1948 years, Israel did not exist as a nation. And in 1948, it became a nation again. Amen. But God has said that in the last day that all the nations of the world would gather against her. What's going on right now? Even the United States now are trying to talk against her. Isn't that amazing? That that has come to pass. Something that could not have existed for 1948 years. 
It's happening right in front of our eyes. Look at your neighbor and say, fulfill scripture. But I want to talk about something a little different about our, uh, dealing with the church more specifically. Amen. Because this is what we need to know right now, what we should be doing and who we are. Amen. Now, what it really uh, gets me is this verse. I'm going to start at the uh, seventh verse and read down. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and know of God. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another. For lovers of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and know of God. Everybody in here read that verse to me. I want to know if you. I want to, Nate, let me hold it. I, I, everybody in here read that verse. Let me. Everyone that loveth is born of God and know of God. Ain't that right? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me a minute, y'all. I'm trying to hook up. I know that must be out. <laughs> Completely. That's why it's not working. Yeah, but they told me it's back on yesterday. They text me and told me it's back on. It's not back on. Yeah, the little box back there showing it's on, but it's not on. I apologize for that, saints. All right, let's get back to it. Beloved, let us what? Love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is what? And what? So if we don't love, we don't what? But since we're born of God, we know God. Hello. Amen. We love and we know God. Fifth chapter book of Galatians, please. So since we, we, we are born of God, we love one another. Hello. <laughs> and we know God. And God knows us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this, but a lot of people don't understand this. The love of God, the kind of God that God can have for us, was revealed through his son Jesus down on the cross for us and going to hell for us, being raised from the dead for us. But in order for you to experience that love, you got to come to Jesus. No, no, that's right. <laughs> a lot of people think that, that, you know, God loves everybody. No. No. He loved those who are his. Not everybody belongs to God. And since you're Mount Hermon, I know y'all been taught this. Not everybody's God's child. Amen. The good neighbor say, not everybody's God's child. It's 22nd verse, 5th chapter. Should I say something about that? Okay. In order to become God's child, you must be born again. When you're born in this world, you're born in the world in sin. Hello? And when you're in sin, sin separates you from God. So in order to be right with God, you've got to deal with the sin issue. So that's why Jesus said, except you be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, some people thought kingdom of God meant going to heaven. No, he's talking about the spirit of God, which is on the earth with us now. Can't be regenerated. 22nd verse of the Galatians, the fifth chapter said, but the fruit of the spirit is what? Love. Say what? Love. Love. Now, love manifests itself in joy, peace, long suffering, gentle, goodness, meekness, faith, meek, meekness, and temperance. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen. All these others are manifestations of love. Y'all got it? Huh? Amen. God is love. And he that loveth is born of God. And he that loveth not knoweth not God. Right? So once we were born again, we became God's children. Amen. Amen. And the scripture says, a command, new commandment Jesus gave us to love one another, even as he loved us. And then John, that same John even said that, hereby I know that we are passed from death into life because we love the brother. Amen. Amen. Why was he, why was that a, uh, what the word, a requirement? Why was that a stipulation? Why was that even put in the Bible? 
Why would he even told that? Because there should be a distinction between the children of the dark and the children of light. Amen. 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 And we all know that hatred is not of God. Amen. Am I right? And we all know that murder is not of God. So all that stuff comes from the dark side. Hello? Amen. You I am your father. <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand that uh, they didn't bow their knee to the, 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 the what's the name? The dark side. I'm trying to think what the name was. What was yeah. Darth Vader, yeah, Darth Vader. They bowed their knee to Darth Vader. Amen. But if they want to be, be in the light, they got to come to Jesus. They got to come. Amen. They got to come to. The, now, I ain't talking about no force either. <laughs> Satan is the God of force. Amen. That's how they get you, boy. They tell you to leave, leave the, the dark side and then come over to the force. The force is Satan. They're trying to get you on both sides, get you, get you coming and going. So you got this thing going on where, you know, they got white witchcraft and black witchcraft. Uh, he that practiced witchcraft shall not inherit. Fifth chapter, 19 verse of Galatians, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So I'll stop and snip that blood right now. I don't care if it's white craft or black craft. If you practice it, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. So you get that. That's, that's solved that right now. So ain't no such thing as no good witchcraft and bad witchcraft. All witchcraft is wrong. If you practice it, you won't go to heaven. Read Revelation 21 and 8 and you'll know where you're going. Amen. So don't let nobody fool you. Hello. There's no situational ethics. There's no middle road. Jesus said to be lukewarm, he'll spit you out of his mouth. You either are or you're not. Amen. 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 <laughs> Jesus said either for him or you're against him. Amen. 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 So we are either true to the light or true to the darkness. Am I right? Fifth. <laughs> so the, the, the word says that God is love. He that love will not know of not God, right? So let's look at the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. And, and, and go back to the 19th verse and see what the works of the flesh are. Read it. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And I told you the kingdom of God, Romans 14 and 17. Righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now the fruit of that spirit, the Holy Ghost, is love. The world cannot have the Holy Ghost. Because they practice that fruits. Their works of the flesh. I said fruit, but the works of the flesh. And because of that, they can't have the Holy Ghost, so they can't what? They can't love. They can't love. It's impossible to be able to love. So what are they practicing? Loves. You know, often you hear people talk about the, uh, the, the, the love of a mother is compatible with the love of God. They need to quit lying. They need to quit lying. Amen. Mother's love will never compare to God's love. Never zip. Won't happen. Hello. Amen. So you got so you got people walking around here looking for mother's love. <laughs> I'm for real. Y'all never heard that on the radio or, no, or even on them YouTube videos? It's sad that people understand that God loves us more than mother could ever love us. Amen. Amen. Thank God for mothers. Thank God for a mother that loved you the best she could, but it was all, it was all fleshly. Amen. 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 
I tried to be in, indiscriminate in my love. I try, I, and my love is the same for everybody until they make a difference themselves. Amen. Some people think I'm a respected person, but I'm not. I love everybody. Ask people that really know me. You know, how you be like that, Tatha? Him. Him. Flesh can't love. Amen. Can y'all tell me why? That's right. That's right. That's right. All that amen. But y'all saying all that amen. And so we've, we've allowed ourselves to build our lives on something that can't be trusted. I tell you, I got to take my time because I'm trying to walk y'all into this Enoch walk. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, flesh cannot be trusted. Flesh now, I'm not going to go through the totally scripture. You read the seventh chapter of the book of Romans and then read the sixth chapter of the book of, of St. John and, and, and you just read some of the works of the flesh. Jesus said, the flesh profited zero, not die. Y'all got what I'm saying? Look at your neighbor and say, the flesh profited nothing. What can you gain from the flesh? Right? Because the flesh is corrupt. It was born, the only person, human being that was born, that was not born a man was Jesus. Everyone that had been born from other than Jesus had Adam's nature in them. And Adam's nature was corrupted by Satan's nature when he took that fruit. Rebellion entered into his spirit. Y'all got that? Rebellion entered into Adam's spirit. So the spirit of man at that point was in odds with God because it had something in it. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God said he threw the apostle Paul, he even included all under sin that had not even sinned after Adam, the similitude of his sin. Amen. Yeah. So now we got to understand that every one of us must come to Christ to be born again to get rid of that nature. Yeah. But the once we got born again, we got rid of that nature. So we have the capacity in us to love like God. And I mentioned earlier in Sunday school, it's your choice. I might not have been in Sunday school. I might just say it. I don't know where I said it. It's your choice to choose whether you will love like God loved or not. God so loved the world. Right? He gave. So what is God's love like? Giving, right? What is the flesh love like? Taking. It only does something to those that it can get something from. I mean, excuse me. It only does something good for people that it can get something back from. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Every good deed it does is for us. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? It, it's not done to, uh, just out of charity. Even when you look at these different pol uh, politicians, I can say it because we ain't on the net now. See these different politicians buying all them down. And you watch they start trying to do something good for you. If you ever know they start talking about tax cuts and all that kind of stuff, then they hit you on the other end. Huh? Yep. They, they look right in your face and tell you I'm about to bless you and at, and at the same time somebody standing behind you getting ready to stab you. Yes, For real. Mm -hmm. Taxes go down here and go up there. Yes, Every single time. You, and if you hadn't noticed how, how greedy the world is, when I was used to work years ago when I worked in a, a textile plant, a factory, there was a certain time of year we got our raise. Them, them, them knuckleheads out there that run them businesses, uh -huh. they knew exactly when we were going to get our raise. Soon, soon as the price started going, prices started going up. It's almost like they were working together or something. Your raise didn't matter because they were working together. Because soon they gave you a raise, everything else went up. Couldn't get ahead for the corporation trying to keep you down. I'm for real. Amen. Amen. So the world has never really done anything for us without wanting something else and getting it on the back end. Amen. Only God didn't require of us to do anything. Amen. Before he made it possible for us to become his children. Because the reality of it was there wasn't nothing we could do. 
You follow what I'm saying? So God made it possible to become his children even before we could do anything to be worthy to become his children. And then said, whosoever will, let him come. And then the ones that don't want to come want to sit back and say, well, God still loves me. You ain't reading your Bible. <laughs> you don't know. You under the wrath of God, but that's why he told you to come to this altar. Come to Christ and you will no longer be under the wrath. Amen. Then people get mad because these young people getting cut off. Watch this, watch this, and I didn't want to hit too much on that because I want to deal with this nature thing. But St. John 10, that is part of the nature thing, ain't it? Lord? Go to St. John 10, chapter 10, verse. That's, that's part of that, that dark nature. Part of that dark side. Somebody say the dark side. Go into the light, Mary Ann. <laughs> y'all remember that. I know y'all remember that. Mary Ann, Mary Ann, don't go into the light. Don't be listening to them knuckleheads, Mary Ann. Run into the light, Mary Run into the light, Mary Ann. Run into the light. <laughs> I'm going to start the ninth verse and read to the tenth verse. Jesus said, I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but what? To steal. to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What does the thief come to do? To, to take something from you, yeah. huh? to murder, and to destroy. That's all he come to do. And most people don't sit down and try to... Yeah, I, I like to analyze stuff and break it down to its basic form. Amen. And I do people like that. Amen. But a lot of folks can't do that because they're going through life by, by instinct. But a thinking person can see it. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. And so a lot of people don't understand that a, if a person, cousin, they'll lie. And if they're lying on you, they'll hurt you. And if they'll hurt you, be careful. They can step across that other line and kill you. Y'all got what I'm saying? Y'all got what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't realize that, so they, they just go along the hee hee hee. Yo, hee hee hee, go end you up somewhere you're going to need to be. You better stop being naive. Amen. Who is the father of liars? The devil. So if they're lying to you. Somebody said they'll steal from you, they'll lie to you, they'll lie to you, they'll kill you. <laughs> Hello, somebody. So, but we spent our whole life trying to, no, it ain't like that. Yeah, well, I'm 18 years old and in all my years, <laughs> I reset my time. <laughs> I, have, I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't found that not to be true. And all, all these years, it's true. It's true. I, re, I started over again and find it still the same way. Amen. amen. Don't let nobody fool you. Learn something. Amen. 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 Why? Because Satan is the father of lies. Y'all got what I'm saying? So the nature of darkness is selfish. Look at neighbor say it's selfish. So at the core of every naturally born human being is selfishness. Paul said, in my flesh, 7th chapter of the book of Romans, dwell of no good thing. How much good? How much good? You don't tell me that. I know my, my boyfriend good to me. Good how? For what? It's called reciprocity. He good to you because you're doing something for him. Now, cut off the stuff you do for him and see how long he'd be good to you. You follow what I'm saying? Follow what I'm, see how long he's going to spend money on you. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> that won't last long. You're going to find out quick, fast, in a hurry. It's the honey, honey. You, you, <laughs> he done got you tricking and you don't even know it. I'm, I'm trying. He didn't glamorize your trick, and that's what he done done with it. Yep, that's what that happened. But all you is just a kept one. That's all. 
Because you need to quit. Now that's the dark side. That's what the dark side do to you. That's the dark side. Y'all don't understand the love of God gives. And I, I like to give my definition of it. Some of the people won't know, but I'm telling you up front so you won't think God said this. <laughs> love is a willingness to give of oneself in behalf of another, expecting nothing in return. If you put strings to it, it's not love. You follow what I'm saying? At the fullness of time, God sent his son. And people don't even know what the fullness of time was about. Sin. It was time for the earth to be destroyed again. But rather than destroyed, God sent his son. In the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Why? So the righteousness of the law will be fulfilling us who choose to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But if we don't choose to walk after the spirit, hello somebody, the same re repercussion that come upon sinners for their sin will come upon us. Amen. And it's been played out throughout history. That's why they don't want you to remember history. Amen. This thing, this socialism thing ain't never worked. Never. They tried it in Russia. They tried it in China. They, you follow what I'm saying? They just tried it in uh, what's the name? Venezuela. Uh -huh. And Venezuela economy crashed. Thank you. The people starving to death. And they, and they still try to push social, because it has nothing to do with helping the people live a better life. All y'all that want to, want to live off the government. It's about control. Look at the neighbor says control. The devil don't give you a choice. It's his way or the highway. Amen. God gives you a choice. You choose to follow him, you're going to be blessed. You follow the devil, you're going to get what he got. What do you got? And even at that, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, and people thought lose your soul meant go to hell. I don't think so. Lose control of your own life. I like, oh, you're trying to change the scripture. You need to talk to daddy. Lose control of your own life when you're under the control of a thing. Paul said all things are lawful for him. But not all things are expedient are right. But he will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. Because he had already bowed his knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Money ain't going to control me. Society is not going to control me. Hello, somebody. Amen. Nature is not going to control me. Only Yah. That's it. That's what Paul was saying. But yet today, people don't realize they're controlled by fads. Do yes. I need to explain? Mm -hmm. Whatever fashion come out, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. from, from human beings to clothes, from clothes to food, from food to cars, from cars to ideology, the newest sayings are cliches. Oh, we don't talk like that anymore, Pastor. That's old. That's outdated. Oh, y'all didn't change your lingo again? You must be confused. Hey, Amen. You know what happened, right? When they're talking like that before, it, it, you know, and people started to understand what they were saying, that was too much for them. <laughs> they had to change up again because they're going to locate me. Y'all didn't get that. See, they were talking in code, this code, and th that code got broken. <laughs> so now they got to change the code. <laughs> as soon as this one gets broken, they're going to change it again. Because they don't want you to locate them. Somebody go figure it out after a while. Can't tell you everything straight because you might not like me. Amen. So the dark side is all about self. Do your neighbor say the dark side is all about self? Or uh, the nature of sin is all about self. And that's one categorization you can put to it and you'll recognize sin. One of the things that I try to teach people that we often talk about the commandment being sin, but y'all people like, don't realize that anything done without faith is sin. And how folk hate hating the commandments. They just hate and hate the well, you know, we're no longer under the law. We don't have to keep the commandments. You're right, I don't have to because I am the law. I'm the commandment in manifestation. Amen. I, I don't have to fight myself when I get around when I get around church folk got to watch what I see and how I act. I'm the same 24-7, 365 days a year. 
I am who my daddy says I am. But you got a lot of people, they got to watch it, boy. They got to be very, they got to be very careful with their words. Because they will give themselves away. Amen. They got to keep them, their flesh on them because they're going to mess around and let the world, them people that say know what they really are. I can relax around saved folk. I can relax around sinners. Amen. You squeeze me, Jesus coming out. Right. Amen. 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 But a lot of folk, you start squeezing them. I mean, the church folk, you start squeezing them. <laughs> you better run. And you better make sure Pat and Charlie don't fail you. For real. Amen. Because that stuff inside them ain't supposed to be in there. <laughs> if they're they using profanity, if they're using profanity, you say something, do something wrong, they, they, and they, they, some people that got so wise now, they, they, they didn't convince themselves to change the word. You still cussing. You, you just change the code, that's all. You just change the code. The, the, the slang, the beyond, by, by, what do they call it? The, uh, ebonics. You just change the ebonics. That's all you did. You just changed the code. Now, because we located you. So, so now you got to do it in a way that we can't locate you. What'd you say? I ain't going to say that without finna to say it. <laughs> but it's spelled S H I N E. But it's a substitute for the other word. When they be saying that dog is gone, they be wanting to say that other word about God. Y'all got what I'm saying? That that's they just switched the code. That's all. Y'all looking at me fine. Y'all looking at me like that. I'm telling you the truth. That's still that old nature at work up in there. You gotta get rid of that boy. You gotta sanctify yourself. If you've been born again, you got to sanctify yourself. You know, sanctify means set apart. You got to set yourself apart. He, Jesus actually, the, through the apostle Paul said, come out from among them and be separate. People don't want to be different. They don't like to stand out. Hello? And then you got those that say they are different, but they know they're not. They're acting the same way the rest of them act. So you say to yourself, how are they different? Amen. Now look at uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, I think the eighth verse. I'm trying to take you somewhere. I want you to see that there's a difference. Somebody said a difference. Between the nature of the sinner and the nature of the child of God. The nature of the sinner, lust, the only, only thing that come out is lust. That's a strong desire to have. Hello? But out of the saint, out of the born again believer comes L-O-V-E, a willingness to, to, hello, to serve. I just like so much of this. I'm going to start the first verse and read today first. So y'all just get mad, go home, what they want to do. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Amen. Amen. We are supposed to be following God because we his children. Amen. And walk in love. That, that love word again. As Christ also has loved us. And how did he love us? Amen. And had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So you, you say you're in God and you're walking in God. If you're not practicing that, no, you're not. Third verse said, but fornication, sexual immorality, and all uncleanness, our covetousness, greed, let it not be once named among, not once. Amen. Name among you has become of saints. Amen. That stuff should not even be named among the people of God, the church of God. Y'all got, y'all see that right there? Amen. Neither filthiness, now what? Foolish talking. Amen. You know, I hate to dwell right there because a lot of church folk is silly as silly can get. Yeah. And they don't realize that saints supposed to be putting that stuff away. Amen. Hello. You know, Paul talked about them silly women. Yep. <laughs> silly men too, because we know they ain't got effeminate. So he said, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Learn how to be praised, praising God. Be thankful to God, grateful to God. Talking about the goodness of God. Talking about how wonderful God is. Amen. How great God is. Amen. 
Watch this, fifth verse. For this you know that no homonger, sexually immoral person, shall, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, greedy person, who is in the what? What do you call them? Idolater. Somebody that worship false gods. So he considered them as people that worship false gods. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. They have no right to the things of God. No access. So they, a lot of church folk are wondering why they can't get in. Access to the things of God. Right there. Right, it's in the book. Look at neighbor say, it's in the book. All you got to do is read it. It tells you why they can't get in. Stumbling and fumbling for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and die and leave the earth and still can't figure out why they can't get in. Right there, tell you. Watch this now. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Remember I told you that when Adam disobeyed God, the spirit of rebellion entered his seed and into his, his nature. And everybody born after him from then on had that spirit of rebellion. Mm -hmm. That disobedience, y'all. <laughs> Hello? So don't let nobody fool you. The same way sinners, are though they never gave their life to Christ, a judge for those things that we just got to read. So also with a child that was God's child start disobeying him. <laughs> Suffer. So he said, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Why? For you were you were. They can never say, you were. You're not like that anymore. You were darkness. But now, what are you? Light in the Lord. And he tells us what? Walk as children of the light. What does that mean? Operate, live, function like a child of the light. Amen. Some verse of the first epistle of John, the first chapter said, if we walk in the light, even as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of his son cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we are commanded to walk in the light. Amen. Now, St. John, the first chapter, let me show you who the light is. Is that all right? Don't get mad at me, get mad at God. What good that's going to serve you? Amen. I'm going to start the sixth verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. The good neighbor say, John come to bear witness of that light. That all men should through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light with light of every man that should come up into the world. He was in the world and what? The world was made by him. And the world did not even recognize him. Who, who was that? According to Isaiah 7, chapter 14, verse, a virgin shall conceive and bear, bear a son. Ninth chapter, I can't remember the exact verse. It tells us that upon his shoulder rests what? The governments of the world, right? But if we go back to that 14th chapter, it said his name will be called Emmanuel, meaning, I mean, the 14th verse of 7th chapter, will be called Emmanuel, meaning what? God with man. So we see why he can bear the governments of the world, called the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father. We know why he can be called all that, right? Because he was God in the flesh. You got me? So he came to the world, but the world, he created the world, and he came to his own, but they didn't what? And he came to his own, and what? They wouldn't receive him. Right? Are y'all seeing this thing? Are y'all seeing this thing? So the light is Jesus. The light is Christ. But we that have received him have, for though you were sometime doubt, and now you're light in the Lord, to so walk in the children of the light. Amen. And if we walk in the light, even as he in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, his son, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. If we're in Christ, watch this, but as many who ever received him, to them what? Gave you what? The power. To become who? What? The sons of God. Even to them what? That believed on his name. Now turn to Galatians, the fourth chapter. Y'all writing this stuff down? Because I want you to meditate on it. I'm trying to, get to, I'm trying to show you something. See, out of the dark side comes all that lust, the flesh, carnal, natural, selfish stuff. But out of the light side, out of the children of the light, comes the love of God. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Galatians, the fourth chapter. I just got to do it. Fourth, I'm going to read start the fourth verse. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. That was we sinners that was under the law. But we no longer sinners now. See, Christ has redeemed. If you came to Christ and bowed your knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you're no longer a sinner. Okay? You might be a disobedient child of God, but you're no longer a sinner. Amen. That we might receive the adoption of son. Why did he do this? Look at your neighbor. So you can receive the adoption of sons. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Now, now mark that whole pastor calling to it so we can come back to it. Because I'm going to say something. going to mess everybody up in here. Why are you talking like that, pastor? Because, see, there are four drives of the, the animal. Four drives, four things that motivate the animal, four things that ride that animal live. Y'all with me? One is what? Food to eat. How many of y'all controlled by your appetite? Love to eat. Hello, you should eat to live, not live to eat. Two. Most of us in here got enough sense not to be walking around naked. So we go wear clothes to protect our body. And we go want a roof of our head and a walls around us to protect us from the weather, right? Am I right? Shelter. Am I right? We desire that, right? Those two things, we desire food to eat, we desire shelter and protection for our body. Am I right? Animals do too. The motivation of an animal is substance, hello, and protection, shelter. Three. The, excuse me, three. I, I hold up too many fingers. Three. The third one. The third one. The third one is self-preservation or the thing that will make a person fight somebody. To protect themselves, to fight against somebody. So if you attack them, they're ready to fight. Vent the mind, said the Lord. The battle is mine, said the Lord. You're not allowed to fight this battle, right? So we know as children of God that we don't fight. Physically speaking, we fight spiritually. So that third thing is a drive of the flesh to defend itself against the enemy. Are you with me? What's the difference between a human being and an animal? The fourth one is procreation. You, they can't procreate without sex. So what are the four things, the four motivate, the four desires that drive the animal? I just named them, right? Yep. Now when you look at a human being, hello, hello, just, just watch what I'm saying, watch what I'm saying, because you miss what I'm saying. You, you're taught to go to school and all this kind of stuff to grow up. Then once you become an adult, you get a job. Why? For food, for a house, for shelter, Right? Right? To take care of your physical body, right? right? Then you're told to get married, right? right. Yeah. Let's forget that part, right? Some folks told to get a gun, right? <laughs> learn how to fight, be defend yourself. Y'all yeah, forgot that part right there. Get a gun, learn how to protect yourself, defend yourself, right? Self-preservation. Right, self-preservation, that right? Amen. Amen. Even the, the government, they, they form an army, yeah. a military yeah. for self-preservation, to protect, defend themselves, supposed to defend themselves, but some nations become aggressive. And it's not for defense. They, 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 they overrun it. They're, ho they're hostile. They're aggressive. Then you get to, then you get to this next level. Uh, you're encouraged by... Oh, I'm trying to think of the name for it. What's, what, what the LGB two mean? Oh, you're encouraged by straight, straight parents. <laughs> you're encouraged by straight parents to find you, if you're a girl, a husband. If you're a boy, to find you a wife, right? Why? For procreation. Right? Then once all that's done, what happens? They taught you to retire and do what? Die. And I promise you, I can come out here and lay my hand on you and tell each one of you that you're in that category that's basically what you live for. Not all of you, but some of you. I can come and lay my hand on you and tell you, I've, I've seen you now. And tell you, that's what you're really living for. That's your whole drive in your life. Jesus. I promise you I can do it. Yeah. 
But I ain't going to do it because I don't want to embarrass nobody. But the point is, as a child of God, that should not be our goal. Amen. Jesus said, labor not for the meat that perishes, Amen. but that which endures to everlasting life. Lay up your treasures in heaven for the moth of thief and whatever can't break in and corrupt. Ain't that what he said? Ain't that what he said? Paul turned around and said, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above on what Christ is seated on the right hand of the majesty on high. Set your affection on what? Heavenly things. So that is different from being an ordinary human being. You're not told, Jesus even told us, he said, don't worry about what you go eat. Don't worry about what you go wear. Amen. Don't worry about where you go stay. Amen. Father knows you have need of these things. But seek ye first. He said the Gentiles, the sinners seek after them things. That's what sinners seek after. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this shall be added unto you. So, so the drive, the, the nature in us got us seeking heavenly things. The nature in them got them seeking earthly things. These things perish. These things go back to the dust. These things can be stolen. These things can be corrupted. Y'all follow what I'm saying? They can fail, but that can't fail. I hear you talking about that. That's being in heaven. No, I, I, he said the kingdom of God has come now unto you. The kingdom of God is here. Yeah. In the person of the Holy Ghost. Y'all follow what I'm saying, right? So anything that can go on in heaven can go on right here. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, according to your faith. So if you think you got to wait to get to heaven. No, I'm just saying, if you think you got to wait to get to heaven to get it, then you go have to wait till you get to heaven. <laughs> but if you can believe it can happen right now, it can happen right now. Yeah. Say it one more time. Yeah. He's a now God. Yeah. Amen. Everybody living in that future God. Jesus said, I am, I am. that I am. Yeah. So when is it? Yeah. Now. So what, 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 what Mary Martha once said to him, Master, I know in the resurrection my brother live again. Jesus looked at it and said, uh, I am the resurrection. In other words, the resurrection, hello somebody, is not a day. It's a person. So wherever Jesus is, there's life from the dead. Stop sit back down. They missed them. They missed them. I tell you, I'm about to have a Holy Ghost fit right there. and Y'all missed them. Amen. And Jesus said, Jesus said, look, Jesus said that he's the good shepherd. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Right? And he leads his sheep out into pasture, right? Y'all know what pasture is, right? That's where the sheep eat, right? Then you go back to you go back to the 23rd Psalm and say, The Lord is my shepherd. And what did he say? What? I shall not want. You know what he said? Thank you, Lord. I shall what that mean? You won't have need of anything. Why? Because he maketh me. Then they say he maketh me. I know it said green pasture, but that means plenty. He maketh me to rest in plenty. Plenty, 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 plenty. See, 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 and the believer's house go dwell Toby. Toby moves into the believer's house. Said the house will be filled with good things. Y'all got that? So I don't have to worry about those things because God said, I shall not want. God said he supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So all I got to do is keep seeking him. Do what he said do. Amen. That's all and he will provide for me. If I, if I need a job, he'll bless me with a job. I need a car, he'll give me a car. I need a house, he'll give me a house. Hello, somebody. As long as I'm seeking him, he's going to give me whatever I need to fulfill his plan and his purpose in this earth. Amen. If I need to become the plan owner, he'll promote me till I become the plan owner. You got what I'm saying? Promotion don't come from the east, the west, nor the south. It comes from... Y'all got what I'm saying? He takes down one and puts up another. Yeah. Better be careful, I might get your job. Amen. 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 See, the saints don't think like that. 
<laughs> you walking around there that supervisor being stupid and acting crazy, I'll be saying in my heart, you better be careful, I'm going to have your job. I really don't want it, but they're going to give it to me in a minute. You keep on acting like that. I'll be saying it myself. I wouldn't say it to him, but I'll be saying it myself. Keep on messing around. One of my daughters, she was dealing with this supervisor on her job, always harassing me. I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> After a while, she was gone. Amen. It don't pay. Pastor, you say, God, worry about that for real? Yeah. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he'll take care of all that other stuff. That's right stuff for God. Y'all know that, right? Y'all be about worrying about one or two people. One or two people. How many people has the guy I'm worried about? That numerous has a sand on the beach. What happened to them boys? Somebody, thank you. They woke up in hell, dead. Found that old stupid king and captain. That's what happened to him. He went back home and got killed. Messing with God, talking against God. What is God? What can God, what can your God do? Them other gods couldn't deliver their people out of my hand. And the Bible said God heard him. <laughs> he would have been all right if God hadn't heard him, but God heard him. Now watch what I'm about to tell you. God said his eyes are over us and his ears are open under our cry. So if God is watching over us and ears are open to us, that means if you stand in the child of God present and you saying stuff, God hear everything you saying. Amen. So you better watch how you put your mouth on the child of God. Because God is listening. Amen. Amen. And what did Moses say to the Pharaoh? Now you spoke what will be done to you. He put them words out there and his own words came back on the honey. You know what happened to a lot of us? We don't trust God. And that's why we keep doing things the way the world do because we after that four things. Well, let's do one better. Let's let God handle them four. Let's do the fearful. one. <laughs> Y'all getting it yet? Y'all getting it yet? I hope you're getting it. Now let me go one more scripture. I'm going to let you go. Second Peter, first chapter. I think I'll read the third and fourth verse. You with me? Add, add this on there too so you have a lot to meditate on. See, I know some places they don't give you all this because they just want you. <clears throat> Buck and then you go out there and end up licking and doing everything else you're big enough to do. Drinking, smoking, shooting, potting, everything you can do. Amen. Then come back to church and want to be. The devil using you like a puppet on a string. Amen. No, you ain't got to be like that. No, far from it. As a child of God, you have the victory. Third verse said, according to his divine power, according to his divine power, has given unto us all things. Are y'all with me, young people? I know they're trying to mess in your head and keep you from seeing this. But you need to get your Bible and look at this. This is what the devil keeping you out of. Keep you out there bound like a little yo-yo on a string. Let you go so far for God and then snatch you back. You be saying, I went to church, you snatch you back. I went to church, you snatch you back. I, I, I quit smoking, you snatch you back. I quit drinking, you snatch you back. I quit fornicating, you snatch you back. Well, how are you going to maintain the victory when you realize who you are in God? When you come to the realization that you have been born again, that you are now the son of God, and the devil has no authority over you, that's when it'll stop. Look at this third verse. According to his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Life and God. You know, the book actually says that uh, godliness is probable in this life as well as the life to come. Some folk were never told that. They thought we were just living to go to heaven. I'm living to rule and reign. You might be living to go to heaven. I'm living to rule and reign. I'm about to take over. Look at your neighbor say, he's about to take over. The devil will have to bow. Somebody say bow. Amen. To who? Jesus in me. Jesus in you. I've got that thing over there. Let me read on. 
on us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge. See, that's, see, see, see what he try, why he's trying to keep you out of this knowledge? Why he just want, he don't mind you going to church and get the knowledge and then do that. Y'all yeah, know what I'm saying? When I get through ministering, jump up and shout and have a Holy Ghost fit. Yeah. Hey Amen. You want to come to church, just shout and jump and scream and holler and walk out and the devil kill you. Then even the world say knowledge is power. Even the world tell you knowledge give you access. So why is it that you can be that dumb? <laughs> Hello? That you go to church and want to just shout and jump and scream and holler. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So what that mean? No weapon. And you holding your shield up in there. Even, even the faith in the word is your shield. So I don't know what you think protecting you. Let's read on. Let's read on. I'm going to mess up now. Let's read on. Y'all ready for this? So he goes out to say, through the knowledge of him that call us the glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us, what? Did y'all see that? You think what the devil got to offer his people better than what God offered us? God has given us all things richer to be in joy. Thank you, Lord. Paul said, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. So why come I don't have all things? Because you ain't learned to use your knowledge. If you even got any. Amen. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. These great and precious promises, why? That by these, that by these, you might be partakers of what? What nature? Do y'all understand what that just said? Coming in, I got to close with this, but do y'all understand what he just told us? See, the Bible talks about us receiving adoption of son, but it's more than that. Because Galatians 4 and 6 said God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. Something's taking place in that spirit. Amen. Something's taking place in the very most essence of your being. That would make you who you are. What's going on in there? Divineness has entered in. What is it doing? It's changing me. Changed my nature. God took out that old nature. Now he put a new nature in there. That's why Paul said, put ye on the new man. Yes. That's creating an image of Christ Jesus. Because the new man looks like Jesus. Amen. Guess what else? It can do what Jesus does. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it can do what Jesus does. So if, if I could find a way to walk in the divine nature, what'd that mean? Godness. So every born again believer has the potential to be a manifestation of God on this earth. As he is, so are we in the earth. Every one of us that have been born again has the potential on the inside if we just put that man on. Stop walking around with that. See, see, I know Anthony's gone. I have a new name. I'm putting on the new man that with the new name. So I'm trying to dis disassociate myself with any way that Anthony would act. Y'all got what I'm saying? I want to act like the new man that's created in the image of Jesus, who was God manifested in the flesh, so that God can be manifested in the flesh again. So if you want to shout, shout right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now if you want to keep on being a prayer chicken, that's your choice. Like I told you, that's the human equation. That's your right to choose to continue to follow that way. But if you want to be a son of God, follow this word. Change your lingo. Change what you meditate on. Change what you put in your spirit. And, and begin to strengthen your infant man and what God says about you. God said you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. God said you're the head and not the tail, a bubble and not the knee. God said he'd make your enemies your footstool. God said the place of your the glorious high throne is a place of your what sanctuary from the beginning. A throne, a throne. A throne from the beginning. I had a throne. Who sits on the throne? 
The king sits on the throne. So from the beginning, I'm a king. Let me quit. Let me quit. I'm about to go crazy up in here. Hey! And you want to be flesh and blood? You want to be just a natural human? You want to be like one of them prayer chicks? You want to be like one of them animals out there? Go right ahead. Have at it. God offered me sonship. God made me an heir of him and a joint heir with Christ. That's what God offered you. That's what God set before you. That's what Jesus said. When you come to him, you can receive. Hallelujah. Then it, then, it, then it got bold and said, if you believe this, the works I do, you're going to do also. And greater than these shall you do. Y'all getting this thing? And I'm, I'm, I got to share a little bit more because me and daddy been talking about some stuff. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, they am I the midst of them. So where is Jesus at? Right here. Then he said, then two of you touching the grip on anything they shall ask. Anything that they shall ask. Anything that they shall ask. So whatever you've been troubling with, been wrestling over, I'm your two. I'm going to agree with you today. And if you believe this message, <laughs> your world just changed. Are you ready? Get your heart and mind on the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release my faith with that individual. I'm in agreement with them right now that this situation turns around in their favor. And I praise you it is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 The bill is paid. Hallelujah. You go back to the doctor, the report has changed in your favor. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. You know, promotional come from these, not the west, not the south. Promotion come from God. So do raise it. So do raise it. So do raise it. The blessing of the Lord make rich and he had no sorrow. Somebody say, I'm catching a raise. Hallelujah, my paycheck is increasing. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I heard the Spirit say, and you shall run and not be weary. And walk and not faint. <laughs> hey! Yeah! Yeah! But they that went on the Lord will renew their strength. Mind up on wings like an eagle. I know y'all think I'm a little off, but all all y'all intellectuals, you ain't gonna get into this. One, I found out something is re the reality of it is when the spirit of God, the word hits your spirit, it causes your flesh to react. Amen. But reasoning can stop it in your head. The natural minded person cannot receive the things of God because they're foolishness to them. Because they're spiritually discerned. Amen. Amen. So they're set there trying to reason with this instead of embracing it. If I threw, if I, if I threw hundreds of dollar bills out there right now, how many of y'all be sitting right there and say, thank God for the hundred dollars? The moment I threw them bills out there, You may withhold yourself because I didn't say come get it. But some of y'all be up on your feet. It's raining money. <laughs> you be ready. You be ready to gather in the money. But you hear the word of God and you sit there and look at me. That's why it ain't working. They that tremble at the word will enter into his presence. People that sit back and just hear the word and it don't move them. You ain't getting nowhere. Amen. I like the word. I love the word. It's, it's been my help. It's been my shield. It's been my buckler. It's been a high tower. It's been my refuge. It's been my fortress. It's been my covering, my shelter from the storm. Amen. This word works 24-7, 365 days a year. 
All you got to do is live in it and let it live in you. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful and grateful for the privilege to share what you put in my spirit. I think of that word resting in the hearts of your people. The devil has been defeated. His power has already been broken. The word of God has gone forth and there's nothing he can do about it. It's going to accomplish what you said and prosper the thing whether to you sin it. Do you be all the glory and all the honor? In Yeshua, Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said amen, amen. and amen again. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God, God. By, his spirit, by his spirit, when you bowed your knee, bowed your knee. when you bowed your knee bowed to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, change your spirit, man. Change your spirit, man. Say it again. And the divinity. There's a divine being inside of you. You have become the Son of God. Live so. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Thank you. At this time, we turn the answer to the bottom.